Hello, dear brothers and sisters. So happy to be back to share a word of a word of the Lord. And today the Lord wants to talk about faith. And the title of the message is The Power of Faith. Amen. So we will get begin with prayer and get into the word. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. God, we just quiet ourselves down, Father God, to receive and to hear from you, Father God. We come before you, Lord, to hear, Father God, what heaven is speaking, Father God, for our lives, my Lord. We humbly receive your word, your direction, your correction, your guidance, your wisdom, your knowledge, your power, your anointing, hallelujah, your presence, Father God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, Father God. We just pray that you would just take control. Father God, of the atmosphere around us, Father God, so we can be able to receive the word, Lord. I pray, Father God, that we will put you first, Father God, that we will just put everything aside, Father God, to hear what you have to say, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for this word of encouragement, Father God, to, to lift up our spirit, man, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in our lives, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord wants to talk about faith today. And we're going to begin with Genesis. And we're going to begin with Genesis 6.13. And we're going to be talking about uh, not the whole thing, but just right now. We're going to talk about Noah and how Noah moved in faith. Uh, how Noah moved in faith when the Lord told him to uh, to build the ark. So it says the ark is prepared, 613. And no, and God said to Noah, the end of flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with the violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God is saying here that he's tired of the violence and he's tired of everything that's going on. So God is, says, I'm going to destroy the land and I'm going to destroy the people with the land. It says, make yourself an ark. Of gopher, make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. And then the Lord, and then and then uh Noah receives direction from the Lord about the move. So we know that when we are led by the Spirit of the Lord, when we move by faith, there are steps in a direction that we gotta move. It's not like we just have faith and we just like sit around and we don't do anything. Whenever the Lord is saying we're moving in faith, that means like we're doing something that we normally are not doing. We're doing whatever we're doing, like, you know, going about our lives, going to work or whatever we're doing. But then in our heart, we, in our heart, we have faith, right? And uh, we, in our heart, we have faith that for something that we are believing, but there comes a time when the Lord says, all right, it's time. Now we, I'm going to ask you to do something for what you have been believing me for. And it's time to take action. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So as we moving in faith, God will give us direction of what steps we are supposed to take to lead us to the end of whatever the we're believing the Lord for. So here, this man of God, Noah, out of all the families in the world, there was only one family found righteous before the Lord. And he says, Noah, you, I, you are righteous. You and your family are going to be saved. But here are the next steps you should take. And so the Lord is always guiding us as well for our families and the steps that we need to take to make sure that everything is well with our families. Because when we have a relationship with the Lord, God knows what things are going on around us. And he will give us direction about the next move and how we are supposed to go. Um how we are supposed to move so we can make sure that everything comes out good. Amen. So uh, here are the directions that the Lord tells Noah. It says, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher. Make rooms in the ark and cover them inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's 50 cubits and high, it, it's height 30 cubits. You shall make windows for the ark and you shall finish the eight cubits above. Set the doors of the ark inside. You shall make it with lower, with lower second and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy 
from under heaven, all flesh, which is breath, everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife and your son's wives and every living thing of flesh, you shall bring two of everything in the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds after their kind of animals and after the kind, every creeping thing on the earth after its kind, two of every kind will, will take for you yourself all the wood for all the food that is eaten and you shall gather it to yourself and you shall be food and it shall be for you food for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded. So he did. So here the Lord tells them instruction. You're going to get two of everything. You're going to come in with your sons and their wives and I will feed you. I will take care of you. And it said, thus Noah did according to all not just he listened 50 percent. he did he moved by faith and he did all that god commanded him so he did so the lord protected him so here's one story of faith that the lord wanted to share that the lord told noah what to do because he was fine he was found righteous in the in the in the sight of god and God will do everything that is on his side, but there is action that we must take in our on our side. So the second story that the Lord wants to talk about is Abraham. And we're going to begin with Genesis 12, 1, 2, 3. So in Genesis 12, this is Abram. So before he was Abraham, his name was Abram, but the Lord changed his name afterwards. But at the beginning, his name was Abram. It says, and we're going to begin with chapter 12, Genesis 12. And it says, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land. I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And it shall in, in, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed blessed so god tells him he doesn't tell him everything about what it's gonna happen right he doesn't tell him all the things that he's gonna have to go through and he doesn't tell him everything but he just tells him get out from that country get out from your family and it's saying i will make you blessed and i will make you blessed but he doesn't know everything at that moment but here goes abram and he moves by faith he leaves everything behind he leaves his family. He leaves everything behind because he is moving by faith and God will reward his faithfulness. But at the beginning, it's just like, do this. Sometimes he tells you step by step like he did to Noah. Noah, he told step by step, well, you're going to do A, B, C, D. But to Abram, he just said, get out and I will bless you. But he didn't tell him all the things that he was going to go through. And obviously the Lord doesn't tell us everything because Sometimes we might not move even to the first step. So sometimes the Lord will tell us in steps about what we are to do. And sometimes he just tells you one step and he makes you wait. And then when you get to that step, then he moves on to tell you the, the step. So every time it, the Lord is very smart and he knows what he's doing. Okay, we're moving on to Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Uh, we're going to start with uh, verse one. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. For Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless and, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Then Abram said, look, you have and then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one is born in my house, my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but the one that will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, Show your shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. So I love that because right there, he is telling the Lord, Lord, I have no children. 
and he's saying and the error that I have and then I, he said it's one and then the other one is Eliasar. and then the Lord said no Abram that one is not yours because it's God wanted to give him one through his wife with Sarah and he said one is going to come and he said are you look at the stars are you able to count the stars your errors shall be as many as the stars and it says number six and he believed in the Lord and he accounted unto him as righteousness so the Lord is always looking faith is equated to righteousness when we believe the Lord that it's accounted as righteousness because you are righteous in believing that God is good and that he has good things in store for us. Even though it, it was a long time before the, the promise came. It was a long time. Abram waited in faith for a long time. Was he perfect? No. He did things. But God knew that he had a, a, a covenant with Abram and the Lord moved because he had believed in the Lord and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to go to Genesis 22. In Genesis 22, we're going to read 1 through 8. It says, now, so Abram's name now is changed to Abraham. It says, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. So even though the Lord knows that he's a righteous person, the Lord still is allowing Abram to go through different things. And we know that when God tests us and he makes us go through these periods of hardness, it's only to better ourselves and only for God to be able to see if he's still number one. Amen. It says, now it came to pass that after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, and he said, he said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. So here he goes again, and he tells them only one step. He says, give me your son into the, one of these mountains that I will tell you later. So now it's just like move and then I'll give you direction as what you're supposed to do next. It says, so Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and the lad. I will go yonder and worship and we will come back. So even though the Lord had told me, give me your son, he didn't doubt that the Lord was good and that God was not going to take away his son. And if he did take away his son, he still had the power to raise him from the dead. But in faith, he said, I will go up and I will come back with my son. He said, stay here, stay back. It says, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look at the fire and the wood, but there is no lamb for a burnt offering. And here again, Abraham and his faith. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And you know, you see how the scripture it keeps on repeating your only son, your only son. Because he didn't have all kinds of kids. That was like his, the favorite, you know, when you only have one, one pet, like it's the love of your life. But, you know, obviously with the son, it's, it's different because he's your only one. And he wanted him for so long. He waited so many years in faith. And finally, God gives him 
it's Isaac, which means laughter, like the love of his life, and then the joy. And God's like, give me to him. And he says, okay. He doesn't even hesitate. He doesn't fight with God. He doesn't do anything. He says, I will go and I will sacrifice my son. But in faith, he's like, but I know that God is good. And, and I've seen him do good in my life. And I know that he's not going to take away my son, even though the Lord said, give me your son, your one and only son. So it has to be specific that he didn't have all kinds of kid. And if something happened to this one, he has another one. He only has one. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of this place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amazing. I love it. Okay, now we're going to go to Joshua 2.8. Okay, Joshua 2, 8. Okay, and this story is about Rahab, the, the you know, the prostitute. It says 2, 8. Now, before they lay down, she came up to the men of the roof, and she said to the men, so here it is, the woman was hiding the spice, and she moved by faith as well, that she had faith that if she were to help these spies, that the Lord will protect her and that nothing would happen to her family. So we have to understand that we are intercessors for our family because in all these stories, the family, you're protecting your family. So when we obey the Lord and we're following the Lord by faith, it's all for the well-being of everybody in the family. So number two, it says, now before she lay down, she came up to the men on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when he came out of the Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Ammonites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Oji, whom you utterly destroyed as soon as we heard these things our hearts melted neither did these remain any more courage in anyone because of you for the lord god he is god in heaven and above on the earth now therefore i beg you swear to me by the lord since i have shown you kindness that you will also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father my brother my sister and all that i have and deliver our lives from death so the man answered her our lives for yours. If none of you, if you tell, tell this business of ours, it shall be well with you. When the Lord has given us the land, we will deal kindly with you. We will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a rope through the window for her house was on the city. She draw on the wall and she said to them, get to the mountain, lest your pursuers meet you and hide there three days until the pursuers have returned afterwards you may go your way so there was an, an another another woman of god that the lord wanted to mention in this message that she moved by faith obviously she has people coming to her house and asking where are those men and in faith she moved she moved by faith and she said i will protect these men because i know that these men are of the Lord, even though she didn't know the Lord, she says, I have heard these things and by faith without even knowing she moved by faith and, and God accounted it onto her as well as righteousness because the Lord saved her and her family. In Genesis 24, 50. In Genesis 24. And Genesis 24, 50, 
had when Abraham was getting older and he had a son named Isaac, he said, and the and Sarah had passed away. He says, I need to find my my son a wife. It says in 2450s, it says they um let me see. So here, Abraham moved by faith once again. He tells us, says, now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over the land, please put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife from my son from the daughters of Canaanites, among whom we dwell. So where he dwelt was in Canaan, and he wanted a... a a wife for his son, but he knew that he had to be obedient to the Lord and only move according to what the Lord had told him. And he knew that he couldn't get a wife from there. And he says, I need you to get a wife, but not from here. It says, please put your hand under my thigh and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife from my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But you shall go to my country and to my family and take and take a wife for my son. And the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. It says, must I take your son back to the land which you came? But Abraham said to him, beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and who took me from the land and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying to your descendants, I give you this land. He will send an angel before you. And you should take a, a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this. Only do not take my son there. So here is the instructions of Abraham. He says, go back there and find my son a wife by faith. And he says, but if the woman doesn't want to follow you, you're released. But he knew that the Lord was going to find him a wife because God is always a God that wants the good things for us. And he had made a covenant with the, with Abraham that he would is going to bless him. And we know that the blessing could only continue when we are in line and obedience to the Lord. So it says, then Laban and Bethuel answer and said, the thing comes. So, okay, let's say. It says right here, uh, 2442. And this day it came to the well. It says, and on this day, I came to the well and said, O Lord, God of my master, Abraham, if you will now prosper the way which I go, behold, I will stand by the well and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes out to draw water. And if I say to her, please give me a little water from your pitcher to draw. And she comes to me and says, drink and I will for you and for your camel. So Laban said, God, please let the woman that comes here give me water and also offer water for my camels, then I will know that she is the one who you have chosen for Isaac. And says, and she's and she says to me, drink and I will draw for you and your camels. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master son. But before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out of with her pitcher on her shoulder and she went down to the well and drew water and I said to her please let me drink and she made haste and let her pitcher down from her shoulder and said drink and I will give your camels a drink also so I drank and she gave the camels a drink then I asked her and said whose daughter are you and she said the daughter of Bethuel nay her son whom Michael bore to him so I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist and I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, who had led me in the way of truth to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and I will, and tell me not, tell me that I may return to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethel will answer and said, the thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you either good or bad. Here's Rebecca before you. Take her. Take her and go and let her be your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass when Abraham's servant 
heard their word that he worshiped the Lord and bowing him. Then the servant brought out jewelry, silver and gold and clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave her precious things to her brother and mother. And he and the men who were with him drank and stayed all night. Then they arose in the morning and said, send me away to my master. So here he goes. He found the woman. The, then the woman goes and tells her family what happened. And then after that, her family says, this thing is from the Lord. So he gives her, you know, jewelry. And then after that, it says, it says, and he, and it says, and he and the men who were with him, they ate and they drank and they stayed there all night. Then they arose in the morning and said, send me away to my master. So he's like, okay, I found the girl, give me the girl so I can go back, you know, to Abraham and, and let him know the good news that I have, that I have found, you know, uh, Rebecca. But her brother and her mother said, let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least 10. After that, she may go. And he said, do not hinder me since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go with my master. So they said, we will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So the whole story was because this woman, Rebecca, moved in faith. She didn't know these people and she said bye to everything that she had and she moved in faith. Then they asked her, do you want to go? And then after that, and they asked her, do you want to go? And she said, I will go. So God just wants to show different ways of how people are living their mundane lives, doing things, you know, doing the things of, you know, that we do every day. And here's the woman going to the well you know, and here comes this, this man and says like, oh, like I, this and this and that. And then she has the opportunity, right? She has the opportunity to say, no, this is comfortable to stay with my mom and my brother and the things that I know, or, you know, get up and go and leave your family to a place that you don't know what's going to happen. So it says, so, and so, so they said, we will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent Rebecca, their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servant and this man. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands. And may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. So then there goes Rebecca, right? So Rebecca is, you know, on the camel with her nurse or, you know, her helper. And then, you know, it says that then Rebecca and her maid arose and they rode on the camel and followed the man. So, so the servant took Rebecca and departed. Now Isaac came from the way of beer, Leroy, for he dwelt in the south. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening. And he lifted his eyes and looked, and there was the camel coming. Then Rebecca lifted her eyes. When she saw Isaac, she dismounted from her camel. For she had said to the servant, Who is this man walking to meet us in the field? Then the servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac these things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother's tent. And he took Rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So here was a sign where, where everybody moved in faith. Abraham moved in faith that he was going to find his son, a, a woman of God that would move in faith and that would come, right? And Rebecca also left everything behind and she moved in faith. And then she, you know, she saw Isaac. And he saw her and it's well beautiful because of this and he loved her. So it was beautiful because God knows and God always has the person that is right for us. If we wait on God for the perfect timing and we don't get out of line. And then we have the story of Esther 410 as we are celebrating Purim. You know, that's the, you know, the overturning of um of um Haman and the decree that he wanted for the Jews. 
So we're going to begin with Esther 4.10. Esther 4.10, it says, Then Esther spoke to Hathla and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and all the people of king's providence that, that any man or woman who goes into the inner court who has not been called. Okay, so just a little backstory. Haman conspires against the Jews and Vashti was the first wife of the king Ahishus, but Vashti didn't want to come when she was summoned to come in. So they found all these virgins and Esther was a virgin and she was, um, Mordecai was a man who helped raise her because she was born without a father and a, and a mother. So then it comes to Esther, the decree of this evil man, Haman, that, you know, represents obviously the evil kingdom, the evil kingdom. And he said, I, and, and then after that, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman and told him like, what is it that you want? And he said, oh, I want to get rid of the Jews because he knew that Haman was a Jew and Haman didn't bow to him when he walked by. So he hated the Jews and he wanted them to be gone. So the word comes to Esther and then it says right there, then Esther spoke to Hatlak and gave him a command for Mordecai. Mordecai was the person who took care of him and who raised her. All the king's servants and all the people, and then any man and any woman that has not been called into the inner court of the king who has not been called, he has but one law put to death except the one who the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king in 30 days. So they told Mordecai this word. So Mordecai is telling her to do something. And she's saying, if I go in, she's saying I, he can kill me because I have not been summoned to go be presented for him. And he hasn't called for me in 30 days to go and to talk to him. And then he tells her, and then it says, and Mordecai told them to answer. So she's telling him, I can't do anything. He hasn't called for me in 30 days. I can't go into his presence. And then Mordecai tells her, Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than any other Jew. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish yet. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So we know that when um, Esther has the opportunity to move, and if she doesn't, it says that she and her family will perish. And the same thing that I was saying earlier, everything that we do is always for our family, just not for ourselves. So the, here Mordecai is telling her like, girl, you got to do something. Don't think that because you're in the house that it's not going to include you. You are a Jew and you are also going to die if you don't stand up and do something. So it says, then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go and gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Don't eat neither for three drinks nor for three days. My mates and I will fast also. And I will go into the king, even if against the law. And then if I perish, I perish. So she says, fine, I'm going to fast. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink. Tell everybody that is here not to fast, not to eat or to drink. And then I will present myself for the king it says here it says number two five two it says so it was when the king saw esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight and the king held out to esther the golden scepter that was in his hand then esther went near and touched the top of the scepter and the queen said and the king said to her what do you wish, asked Queen Esther? What is your request? And it shall be given to you of two half of the kingdom. So Esther answered, if it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, bring Haman quickly, that he may do as Esther said. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. At the banquet of the wine, the king said to Esther, what is your petition? And it shall be granted to you. What is your request of to half of the kingdom and it shall be done. 
So here she found favor. The king is like, what is it that you want? And she, and then she touched the scepter. The scepter was extended to her by God's favor and grace. So all these things she did in faith, right? So God is calling us to move to another higher level of faith. God is expecting for us believers to come up higher, to continue to believe and to fight for what is belongs to us. The Bible says, and the kingdom of God suffers violent, but the uh, violence, but the violent take it by force. So even though we are violently, you know, fighting against the kingdom of darkness, God is saying, I need you to come up higher in your faith walk with me. I need you to trust me for bigger things. I need you to trust me for the things that I have been believing you for. God is expecting us to have faith because we understand that everything that happens in the natural first has to happen in the spiritual realm. And it's very important that we keep our, 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 our faith alive. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, I love Hebrews 11. I love, 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 love. It is just a very powerful, powerful chapter in the Bible. It says, by faith, we understand. 11, 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things we hope for. So it's saying faith is the substance of things hoped for. For the evidence of things not seen. So we haven't seen it, but it's a substance of things hoped for. It says, for by the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So all of this came by the word of God. And why? By faith. We believe that God is saying the truth. And he says in Genesis that he created the world. We believe it by faith. We didn't see it. We were not there, but we believe it. By faith, we believe it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of the things which, it says, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. So everything that we see here were not made by the things that are visible. They were made by the things that were not seen. Number four, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and though, and throughout, he being dead still speaks. That is so powerful. It says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice, and saying that, though he's dead, he, it still speaks. Number five, by faith, Enoch was taken away, that he did not see that then was not and was not found because God had taken him. So Enoch didn't even die. By faith, the Lord took him away into heaven. It says, for before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we are living in doubt of God, of what he promised us, it's saying here that it is impossible to please God, but without faith, it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It says by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not seen yet moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heirs of righteousness which is according to faith. Faithful Abraham. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelled in the land of promise, as in foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. There, there the heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also conceived strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child and she was past her age. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man has in him as good as dead were many as the stars in the sky of the multitude, innumerable as the sand, as the sand 
which is by the seashore. Number 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your, se your seed shall be called. Concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worship leaning on top of the staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the reward in Egypt, for he looked for a reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured him, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the, pass, the Passover and sprinkling of the blood, lest he, he who, who destroys the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as dry land, where the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. When she had received the spies with peace, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. This is so very important. Look at what happened. So I gave you guys a couple of stories of people of and the things that they had to do through faith. But this is so powerful. Number 32, it says, what more shall I say for the time would fail me? to tell you about the Gideon and Barak and Sansom and Jepha and David and Samuel and the prophets. But 33 is so powerful. It says, through faith subdued kingdoms. That is powerful. Through faith. They didn't have to go fight. They didn't have to go do all these things. Yes, sometimes they did. But that wasn't what did. It says right there, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sore, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to to flight the enemies of the aliens. Women who women receive their dead raised to life again. Hallelujah. And then the last one is going to be Romans. So we're going to go to Romans. 10, 1. Romans 10, 1. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for the righteousness to everyone who believes. Number five, for if Moses writes about the righteousness, which is of the law, the man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteous of faith speak in this way. Do not say in your hearts who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Who will descend from the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near to you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. This is where God wants us to focus because it talks about faith. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the one well confession is made unto salvation. 
For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same as Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever believes on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But this part, God wants us to really pay attention. 14, it says, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So it's very important that wherever we go, we are preaching Christ. Because it's saying here that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to be speaking in order for the people to be able to come to the Lord and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, how then shall they call on him whom they've never heard? It's like, how are they going to call on the Lord if they've never heard of, if they've never, if they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom have they not heard? And how, th and how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the end of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was manifest to those who did not ask for me. <coughs> but this part is so sad. Because right there, we're, they're talking about how we have to go out and speak the word of God and preach the gospel to the people. And I say as this questioning and saying, have they not heard? And they're saying, of course, they have heard the voice of the preachers has gone out throughout the world. And then it says. But I say, did Israel not know? Because we know that Israel is the chosen nation. And then he's asking, did Israel not know? Moses says, and then God says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. So Israel, when God was trying to call on them, Israel was busy doing their own things and not accepting God. Now, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about some people. Most of the people, they were busy not paying attention to the Lord. And God says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. So God is saying salvation has went out to all the whole world. It came to them, but they did not take a hold of it. So now salvation is for everybody, not just for the Jews. And he says, I will provoke you to jealousy, Israel, by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. So the people that were not even looking for God, for me, I was going on about my life. And then things started coming into my life. And then I started looking for the Lord. But here it says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was living my life. I wasn't looking for the Lord until that moment. But before of that, I was not seeking the Lord, but the Lord came. Hallelujah. I said, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I have stretched out my hands. So God is saying, all day long, I have stretched out my hands. All day long, I have been wanting Israel. All day long, I have been pleading for Israel. All day long, the Bible says, I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. That breaks my heart when the Lord says that. But this whole message was about faith and how we have to step up our faith because by faith, they subdued kingdoms. By faith, things that were hoped for and believed for came to pass. By faith, people that were dead were raised from the dead. Hallelujah. So that was the message that the Lord had 
says, by faith, we believe that things that are that are not seen came to pass. Hallelujah. So we will close out with prayer and we'll just begin to ask the Lord to move in our lives. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith, Father God, for the gift of faith, Father God, that we are able, Father God, to believe. Father God, we thank you for the gift of faith, Father God, that we're able to believe without seeing, Father God, the things that you have put in our hearts for years, Lord, that we've been waiting on you, God, by faith, Father God, for many things we have done by faith, Father God, we have left, we have came, we have gone, we have waited, we have been persistent in prayer, my God. And we just thank you, Lord, that all of those things, Father God, that you implanted in us, Father God, as seeds, Father God, will come to pass, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we will not lose hope. We will not lose faith. Father God, we will continue, Father God, like Abraham, Father God. You said that he believed, Father God, even though him and Sarah were old, Father God. And they were both, Father God, in the book of uh, Hebrews 11, Father God. But that's where you name everybody, Father God, who moved by faith, Father God, and they both made it on there, Father God. They both made it on there, Father God, because they believed that you were going to give them what they wanted so bad, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that you said that you accounted it as righteousness, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that we will continue to obey you in everything that you have asked us, Father God, for our families and for ourselves, Father God. We pray that our families also, Father God, will be moving by faith, Father God, that they will not care though about the way that the things look, my God, but they will move in faith, Father God. And we pray, Father God, for the boldness, Father God, to believe and Father God. God, and, and to stand on firm on the word of the Lord, Father God. And we just thank you for this encouraging word, Father God. Faith, Father God, it, faith changes everything, Father God. I believe that faith by, by, by faith changes everything. Faith gives you hope, even though when you're in a situation where nothing seems to go the way that the Lord is saying, but faith breaks, faith breaks depression. I believe that people that are depressed is because they have no faith. They have no hope into the good things that are coming, no matter what it looks like right now, no matter what it, it, it looks like. The enemy tries to come in like a thief of the night to steal from you the faith. Because if you are not, a, if you don't have faith, and you don't have hope to believe that good days are coming ahead. And that you start believing the lies where the enemy tells you that every day is going to be the same. And that nothing is going to change. But by faith we believe that the things are moving in the spiritual realm. Even though here it looks the same. But we know that in heaven things are moving to the way that the Lord said that they were going to be moving. Amen. So we need to continue to to stir up the anointing that is inside of us and continue to believe by faith and everything that the Lord has called us to. Amen. I love you guys with the love of God. And we will see you soon next week if God is willing. Amen. Have a blessed day. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Bye.